My name is Emily Hoyer, and today I'm going to be showing you how to apply cervical traction mechanically using a traction unit. My patient today is a 25-year-old male who sustained a whiplash injury in a car accident four weeks ago. He has been experiencing bilateral muscle spasms of the paraspinals in the lower cervical region, and he presents with tenderness to palpation in the paraspinals and decreased active range of motion bilaterally in cervical rotation and lateral flexion. I'll be using intermittent traction as part of his treatment plan, and the benefit of using traction in this case is that it will promote relaxation of the paraspinal muscles by interrupting the pain-spasm-pain -pain cycle. The changes in muscle tension during intermittent traction stimulate Golgi tendon organs to inhibit alpha motor neuron firing, which allows for muscle relaxation. Before treating a patient with traction, it's important to clear for contraindications, which include acute injury or inflammation, any situation where motion is contraindicated, such as fracture or recent spinal surgery, joint hypermobility or instability, uncontrolled hypertension, or peripheralization of symptoms when traction is applied. There are also precautions to consider, which include structural spinal diseases, when pressure from the halter might be hazardous, a displaced annual fragment, medial disc protrusion, claustrophobia, disorientation, inability to tolerate the treatment position, or when severe pain fully resolves with traction, as that would indicate a complete nerve block. For cervical traction specifically, it's important to check for any history of TMJ problems, and for patients with dentures, they need to keep them in during treatment. Before getting started, make sure that you've cleaned the halter and that the table is locked if you're using a split table. Position your patient supine with a bolster under the knees for comfort. Then you're going to want to make sure that your angle of inclination here is about 25 degrees of flexion for this patient because I'm trying to target the musculature of the lower cervical spine. Then adjust the knobs of the neck wedges so that they're snug against the occiput and adjust the forehead strap here, nice and snug, so that it doesn't slip during treatment. Then you're also going to give your patient the safety cutoff switch so that he's able to stop the machine immediately if he feels an increase in pain. Now you're going to attach the rope to the halter by holding down on the rope release button and pulling. Then attach the metal piece to the top of the halter. And press the rope release button again in order to take up any slack. Now for parameters, generally for decreasing muscle spasm, a force of about 12 to 15 pounds is effective. We'll be using just 12 pounds since this is his first treatment. To set the parameters on the screen, first choose intermittent traction, then select edit min max levels, and today we're going to be using 12 pounds as the maximum and between 0 to 5 pounds as your minimum. Then select edit hold relax times, 5 seconds on, 5 seconds off today to decrease muscle spasms. Then select the total time of treatment which today will be 10 minutes because it's his first treatment, but normally you could do 20 to 30 minutes. Explain to your patient that they can expect to feel a slight pulling sensation in their neck when the traction starts. Are you ready to get started? Yes. Okay, then click start. And now monitor your patient closely, especially for the first five minutes of treatment. Make sure that they don't have any increase in proliferalization of symptoms. In future treatments, you may need to adjust the parameters slightly, you may need to increase the force of traction, and you might be able to increase the time of traction, depending on the patient's response. Expected outcomes include decreased muscle spasms of the paraspinals, decreased pain, and increased active range of motion in cervical rotation and lateral flexion.